welcome to the Team Man Raga Show. Uh, it's my very first episode. Uh, I'm very excited. And going forward, this will be a podcast where we just talk about Raga. It's the quarterfinals week in the Rugby World Cup. Some guys are even saying that the Rugby World Cup is only starting now. So we've got eight teams remaining. We've got four games this weekend. So on Saturday, it's the All Blacks versus Ireland. And on Sunday, it's the big one. It's the one we've all been waiting for. Uh, it's the Springboks, the defending world champions, playing against the host nation. They're playing France at uh, 9 p.m. And yeah, that's the only thing I'm honestly looking forward to this whole weekend. I'm a simple guy. I just love my raga. And uh, on the other hand, it actually must be a bad weekend to be a beer. Uh, so let's get right into the show. So firstly, we're going to talk uh, Manny Lebok, Henry Pollard. Uh, that's been the talk of the town in terms of who do we go uh, obviously, people have their preferences, uh, which is totally understandable because uh, Henry Pollard and Manny Lebok are two different tents. Uh, with Henry Pollard, uh, he's more your tactical ten. Uh, he's a very good goal kicker and he's very good on D. And obviously, with Manny, we know it's the razzle and dazzle, uh, the distribution, the flair, and he tends to get his backs away. And we just look more fluid with Manny Lebok. But then again, it's a quarterfinal game, and I think for that, for that reason, personally, I think the box will go with Henry Pollard starting. Uh, so we start with Henry Pollard, and for any, if we have any points on offer, so we take the points, we, we keep the scoreboard ticking, and we just build momentum. And then obviously, second half, uh, it's a bit more unstructured. Uh, the game is a bit more open, and then we go with uh, Manny Lebok. So in that way, it also depends, I'm thinking, uh, if Andre can last for 60 minutes or the whole game. If Andre lasts for 60 minutes, it becomes very easy. It's a straight swap. Uh, we just then swap uh, Andre Pollard and Manny Lebok. But then if, if uh, Andre Pollard can last the whole game, I think personally, then you would just uh, move Andre to 12 and then move Damien to 13. And then you've got uh, Manny Lebok uh, at 10, obviously. And then you cover all your bases. Uh, the other thing is also Manny Lebok's line kicking. Uh, Manny must be one of the best line kickers in the world. Uh, any, 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 any penalty the opposition will give us uh, on the halfway line, uh, Manny kicks it out uh, 5, 10 meters from uh, the opposition's try line, and then we can obviously get the mole going, and, which is uh, our strong point. We can actually get the mole going, and I think with a bomb squad as well in the second half, uh, we can use that as a weapon. So uh, talking about Manny and Pollard, I see after the Tonga game, uh, they actually took a picture with their partners. Uh, now I can see why the Gens love uh, their number 10s. Uh, I see they are 10 on the field and their partners are Bayer Moy. They are a 10. Proper picture there for the gents uh, that they took with their partners there. Uh, so let's move on to the, uh, the rest of the squad. Uh, Let's start with the front row. I think, uh, first of all, we're going to go with Steven Kutsov is going to be our loose uh, And then Bongi Monami, obviously, at Ruka. And then we've got Franz Malherva at tight end. I think that front row was very easy to choose. That's the, the front row to go with, and that's the best front row we have. Uh, with the locks, uh, I think with the locks, uh, we're going to go with uh, Ivan Etzebeth uh, as our four lock. And, you know, I call him Easterbeth, actually. He's an Easter. Uh, I think with with with, with Etzebeth, uh, it gives you consistently eight, nine out of ten performances. Uh, hardly has a bad game, and yeah, that was a very easy choice for the box management. Uh, I think at number five we go with Sos. So with Sos as well, uh, Sos is a very hard worker. He runs the lineouts. Uh, he's got a very high tackle count. Uh, I think in most most of his stats that I've seen, uh, his tackle counts are. Uh, in the high numbers, uh, one of the highest uh, tacklers in the box squad. And he grinds, he's a hard worker. So I think uh, that whole tight five, uh, very easy choice. So now we move on to the six. Uh, we've got six, we've got Sia Kolisi, Siam Tanda Kolisi, uh, our captain. Uh, the thing with Sia is that he, just does, he doesn't just make tackles. His tackles are very dominant. Uh, he's also, you, you also find him on the outside channels. And how many times have we actually seen where Sia gives that last pass to the, to the wing to score a try? And obviously, he's a good ball carrier. And then, yeah, I think it was an easy choice for the captain. I think it's it his 50, 
first game as captain. Uh, and it would have been it would have been lovely for uh, Braka Hunda, may his soul rest in peace, to actually see a, to see Sia in his 50th game as captain. Uh, I think at seven uh, we've got uh, Peter Steff. Uh, he's 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 back in his form. 2019 form, uh, the form that made him uh, World Player of the Year. And, yeah, uh, so Peter Steff, uh, we've got him at seven, and that was very easy to make, very easy choice to make for the box management. At eight, uh, we go with, I personally, I would, I think the box squad, the box management will go with Jasper Visa. Uh, so we've got Jasper Visa at eight, and the only reason why I say they might go with Jasper is that I think that... Uh, Dwayne Vermeulen has been a tad off, off, off the pace. Uh, he's not the Dwayne I'm, I'm normally used to. So, And I think, obviously, with the back management uh, being privy to the stats, uh, I think uh, they would know that Jasper maybe just... There's a reason why they chose Jasper. Let me just put it that way. Uh, and I think they will go with Jasper. I don't see them changing at this late stage. Uh, but then again, it's Russ Naba. It's Rassi and Chuck Naba. You never know with those two. And then, obviously, uh, Scrum Off, uh, it's Faf. Faf has been the starting uh, scrum off. There was actually a time where you would say Jaden was pushing to be the starting nine. Uh, but unfortunately, Jaden got injured. Uh, so I think right now, Faf is definitely our starting nine. Uh, at 10, we have Andre Pollard. Uh, like mentioned before, I think just because of his uh, superior goal kicking, I-, I would go with Andre Pollard. And then, obviously, at 12, uh, we've got uh, Damien Dallander. Must be the, one of the most underrated box in the team. I mean, uh, people must understand why. I understand. I mean, some people prefer Estes and at 12. But I think Damien just gets... Uh, his, his main job is to get over the advantage line. He does that so well. He showed against Ireland uh, what a powerful runner is. And then maybe, maybe I think the, the issue that people have is just... Those, those offloads, maybe if you can just get two or three passes away and just get uh, the outside backs into the play. But yeah, but besides that, I'm happy with Damien Dallin at 12. At 13, uh, do you go Lucanio or do you go Jesse Creel? Uh, the only reason I would go Jesse is mainly because Lucanio hasn't played for six weeks. Simple as that. Uh, so you don't change what's not broken. You go with Jess at 13 and Jess will give you a solid 7 out of 10 like he does normally when he plays for the box. And he's also very good in D. And that's, very, that's going to be very important in that 13 channel uh, for the box. Uh, the two wingers, uh, we've got Cheslin on the one side. I mean, what more do you want to say about Chesley? Chesley, for me, is world class. He chooses himself. And then I think the debate might have been in terms of who do we go on the other wing. Uh, do we go with Kanan or with Kirtley? Uh, people, some people call him uh, Finnish and Klar, uh, Kirtley Aranza. But personally, I would go with, uh, with Kirtley Aronson. And it's just because, I mean, Kirtley has been playing as the starting wing and he has been performing. Why drop him? That's, 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 that's the logic behind my, my choice. Uh, as much as Kenan can cover 13, I think they'll go with uh, Kirtley Aronson. And at 15, uh, I would go with Damien Willemser, Gaza, as they used to call me. Uh, and I think we're finally starting to see... The Gaza that has always shown, shown the promise, uh, the boy wonder. And yeah, I think he's starting to live up to, to his potential. Uh, for me, one of the most complete backs that we have in the back line. And yeah, I would go with, with, with Damien Willem said 15. And uh, it also makes it easier because I just feel that Valido Room is currently off form. Uh, he had a bad game against Tonga and I just, it just made it easier. Uh, and then obviously the bench. Uh, so at 16, we've got uh, the reserve hooker. We've got uh, Dion Fourie. Uh And when you see Dion play, you can actually see the reasoning behind why the box didn't replace uh, Malcolm Mudweba. Uh Dion Fourie is very good on the floor. He's the closest hooker we have in that box setup to Malcolm Max. Uh, so I think the thinking was uh, we played Dion and... Uh, for me, it makes perfect sense. Uh, I think if Bonambi, for instance, got injured, I think the box management would have thought of in terms of uh, changing um, Bonambi, replacing Bonambi with Dweba. So we've got Dion Fourier there. I just hope uh, he finds his, uh, his jumpers in the lineouts in the second half because that's going to be crucial. Chances are when he comes on, the game will be very tight and I just hope he finds his, uh, his jumpers. And then obviously our two... Uh, 
two props reserves. I call them Boma Low or Me. Uh, so we've got Ox and Che, uh, and we've got uh, Trevor. I think they'll go with Trevor Nyakani and Ox and Che. Uh, a very good duo, and whenever they come on, I think our scrum just gets better. And Ox probably has to be one of the best scrummaging uh, loose head in the world. Uh, just we, we just we just become a better scrumming unit uh, when those two gents come on. I think with, 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 with Mbonambi, he might actually have to play a bit longer. So normally where we'll change the whole, the whole front row, I think in this case we'll just change the two props uh, maybe up to the 60th minute or so and then maybe bring on Dion Furi. And then it also helps the fact that uh, um, Bonambi has scrummed with both Ox and with, uh, with Trevor. So I think there shouldn't be any issues there. And uh, I think the other reserve forwards for me will be the, the twins, uh, the Munster twins, uh, will be Jan Klein and Arches Neyman. I think they always, uh, they always cause damage and they always add, add. You can always, you can feel the physicality, you can feel the change, and they always add, add to the tempo when they come on. So I don't see any changes there. I think we'll go with Arche and with Jan Klein. And then obviously my reserve uh, loose forward will be Kwaha. Uh, I think for me that's just the obvious choice. Uh, Kwaha to come on in the second half, add a bit of tempo, uh, quicken up the game a bit, and yeah, do what Kwaha does. And Kwaha is also quite good on, on the floor. So I think we'll go with Kwaha, and then we'll, it will be a 6 2 split. So our two reserve backline players will be Kubesh Reynach and Mani Lebok. And I think that's how the Bok management works. Uh, will go with that. So yeah, so personally I think uh, the Bok management will go with that 23, but uh, with Rassi and Jack, you just never know. That's the closest uh, I feel that the Bok, the Bok management should go. But yeah, uh, the best thing about the squad that we have, the depth that we have created, and that's all credit to, to, to Jack and Rassi and the whole management team, is the fact that we can actually play any player in any position. I'm out of the that whole squad, that whole 33. We can literally start anyone and uh, we'll still have a good squad. I mean, at 12, you can always play. You can you can play Estazen. At 13, you can put in Lucanio now. You can start money at uh, at 10. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just, you can start Dwayne at 8. There's just so many positions where you can even start, uh, you can start Trevor and Ox. So yeah, they just we just we have so much quality and so much depth. Uh, and then I also want to touch a bit on Rassi, uh, Rassi Yoani Rasmus. Uh, for me personally, I just think Rassi is a rugby genius, and uh, everything that Rassi does or everything that he says, everything is calculated. Uh, even just this week, I think it was yesterday uh, when he was talking uh, at the press conference for before the France game. Uh, the things he said, uh, if you go listen to that press conference, uh, so he mentioned the fact that uh, he likes how the, the French are so physical and how they're so clever. I mean, he used the word clever in terms of how uh, they use simulation. Uh, for let's say, for instance, let's say they, 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 they've tackled high or they've hit a high tackle and the, word, the fact that he used the word that they use simulation, it's just a reminder to the ref that, hey, so in the game, you must just watch out. Uh, also, for the fact that he mentioned that in the last game we played, uh, and I'm sure most of you Raga fans remember, the last time we played France, they scored a try in the last, I think, last 10 minutes, and it wasn't reviewed. I mean, the, 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 stadium, the stadium monitor or stadium uh, screen didn't show us a replay. And uh, so it didn't show us if it was double movement or if it was a legit try. And Rasi just mentioned that. Uh, and it's just for, for the TMOs, for the refs, for the public just to be aware that uh, he hasn't forgotten about those things. I mean, everything is just strategic. And I think for me personally, that's why I love Rasi. But the, the main things I want to I wanna talk about with regards to Rasi, it's more about the ball culture. So when Rasi took over in 2018, he told the team in no uncertain term that the ball culture needs to be transformed. So basically, the ball culture needs to change. Uh, so a guy like Sia, for instance, when he, was, he, when he joined the box squad uh, under, I think, Heineken May was still the coach. He says everything was mostly done in Afrikaans. Uh, the calls were even done in Afrikaans. And Sia didn't feel like he belonged. He didn't feel like his culture was represented. So, so Sia couldn't express himself. So Rassi made sure that when he took over, 
Having previously played for the box and having previously been the box assistant coach, I think Rassi knows a, a thing or two about the ball culture, what works and what doesn't work. And the first thing he did tell that the team in no uncertain terms, I mean, he made it quite clear to the team that the ball culture needs to be transformed. So basically, it, it needs to be inclusive. I mean, that just makes so much sense. It needs to represent all the colored gents, all the black oaks, and all the white oaks in the team. I mean, everyone needs to feel that they belong in the box squad. So you don't need to... The only thing you need to worry about is your performance on the weekend. You don't need to worry about, uh, about how I feel within the box squad. And I think for me... Uh, that's, that's, part of, that's part of the reason why the box squad is so successful. People will tell you that most successful teams have a very good culture going on. A very good culture, a very good khias is, is very important. I mean, you could even see recently, I think it was Lukanyo Arm when he was called up to the box squad, uh, embracing Sia. You can just see the gents just embracing each other, the khias, the vibe. They just, they just enjoy being amongst each other. Uh, I think Arche even mentioned it. I think Arche was, what, uh, he was injured for three years, he said that he just missed being with the chance. He missed the ball culture. He missed just being around uh, his, his Springbok mates. And the other thing Rusty has also done very well is just to give players opportunities. I mean, Rusty has mentioned in the past that uh, he'll always give the underdog the opportunity because he was always an underdog, uh, being born in dispatch, having to play for free straight for the box, uh, having to compete against guys from better schools, uh, bigger provinces, uh, even when he won the Curry Cup with Free State, I mean, Rusty didn't have the budget that all the other big unions had. So Rusty was always the underdogs. And I think that also helped him to think out of the box. And uh, I think that's, that's the reason why he's also strategic. But he, but as much as, so Rusty has said that he'll always give the underdog the opportunity. But I think that in most cases, with the players that he, he has given the opportunity to, they were not even the underdogs. I mean, I think Lucanio made his. It was his second game when he played under Rassi. He became the best 13 in the world. Uh, Arches Neyman got, made his debut under Rassi. Peter, Peter Steff even. I think when Peter Steff uh, started playing for the box, Rassi has admitted that uh, he actually didn't rate Peter Steff. He actually didn't think that Peter Steff would be his, now, his starting number seven. But he gave him the opportunity and he could see that Peter Steff wanted that number seven jersey. I mean, Cheslin Colby, I mean, who remembers... Was it Nick Mallet that said that maybe Cheslin Colby should play scrum off? Kavang. Cheslin Colby playing scrum off. Uh, for me, one of the, the best wings in the world. Cheslin has proven himself. Uh, he went to, went to Toulon. Uh, so yeah, uh, for me, Cheslin is uh, one of the best wingers. And for, for Nick Mallet to actually say that uh, Chesley should actually play scrum off at that time, it just shows you the, the mentality of, uh, of some people in terms of uh, where for them size does matter. Uh, a guy like Cheslin, not believing that a guy like Cheslin can actually be uh, a very successful wing on the international stage. And he's proven it. Uh, a guy like Mapims, he was given the opportunity, even though he had a weakness under the high ball, but he worked on it uh, with, with Coach Stocker and look at him now, uh, he's brilliant under the high ball. So the main two things I wanted to mention when I was talking about Rassi earlier is that uh, Rassi has changed uh, the ball culture and that's one of the main contributing factors to a successful team and the fact that Rassi has given players opportunities. Uh, we see right now uh, most players on form gets chosen for the box squad. I mean, uh, re reserve, reserve scrum of Chantis. I mean, I think he was chosen. He made his debut couple of games before the World Cup started and he actually ended up going for the World Cup. So I think with Rassi and Jack and them, what I like about them, they give players opportunities. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a bit about uh, the match officials. So personally, that's not a topic that I actually like to get into. Uh, but I feel that uh, with the inconsistency that's been happening, I mean, uh, I feel that the match officials have been very inconsistent. I think it's maybe something we should touch on. Uh, Oh, and uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, so our ref for the game, uh, for our game against France, uh, it's Ben O'Keefe, and he's the same ref that uh, we got for the Island game. And I personally just hope that uh, the box have learned a thing or two of, especially how he handles the breakdown, because I think that uh, Island actually beat us at the breakdown. And, and yeah, uh, I'm happy with uh, Ben O'Keefe. For me, it was either 
I was hoping we get Ben or we get uh, Wayne Barnes, uh, but I'm happy with Ben O'Keefe. Uh, so talking about the major features, I think they tend to be very quick in terms of awarding uh, a yellow card. I mean, you would have, let's say, for instance, uh, a TMO bringing up the 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 visuals on the on on the big screen, telling the ref that he's got different angles, and then you'll have the ref already already in his mind already already talking about a yellow card. I just feel that they need to look at the mitigating factors and just uh, look at some incidents just from a, from a rugby perspective. Uh, because I understand that uh, player safety is very important, but uh, we have to find the balance between, uh, being, uh, between rugby, between keeping the physicality. I mean, rugby is a physical sport. And also, obviously, with player safety, I just feel that uh, we, st- we still haven't found that balance and there's just many inconsistencies where you'd have uh, sort of the same offense. Uh, you'll have in one game the player getting a yellow card uh, and then in the next game the player not getting a yellow card. Or in the next game a player being banned for two- 12 weeks and yeah, and so forth. I just feel that we're very inconsistent. Uh, and then the other thing I actually didn't know that actually happened uh, in the Samoa versus England game. So I actually thought all this time that uh, whenever a try is awarded and the player actually takes the conversion, once he kicks it, whether he misses or not, but as long as he has kicked the conversion, you can't go back. You can't go back, right? So I only found out that it's actually... So, so the try can be called back as long as the game has not been restarted. I actually didn't know. So what happened in the uh, England game uh, is that a try was awarded and I think Lima, the, the Samoan flyer, was taking the conversion. And as he kicked, uh, the ref got a call from the TMO and they reviewed it and they, they disallowed the try. Uh, but uh, apparently that's within the laws. Uh, I don't know that. Maybe going forward, that's just something we just need uh, to look forward to, uh, just to consider as well. So up until the game restarts, the ref can call the play back and just uh, change his decision even. It can, it can disallow a try that was given. That's personally how I feel about the match officials. And I also hope that uh, they don't affect or they don't have an influence on any of the four quarterfinal games uh, uh, I prefer us talking about the game, how it was afterwards, rather than talking about the refs and how they influenced the final outcome. And I just hope, especially with the book game, uh, they don't have uh, an influence on the outcome. And it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting to see because obviously, with the French being the host nation, uh, I just don't. I just hope the ref doesn't make uh, decisions uh, because uh, because France is the host nation and. Uh, it's got influence from the crowd because obviously the crowd are gonna get behind the French and they're gonna they're gonna boo or go against any decision that uh, that favors the box and obviously they're gonna cheer and want certain replays on 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 certain plays against the blocks. Basically, the French crowd are gonna aim to get players sent off if it, if it comes to that. So I just hope there's no there's no influence uh, from the crowd. Uh, the ref, but I've got I've got faith in Ben Keith that uh, he's a very experienced ref, and he would not he would not let uh, the fact that the French are the host nation they've got the crowd uh, influence his his decisions uh, on the field. Uh, the only thing we just I just want is uh, a fair game, win or lose, and we don't discuss the ref afterwards. Uh, that's all. That's all. That's all you can you can you can hope for. Uh, talk a bit about tier two nations. Uh, I mean the Pacific nations. You got Uruguay. Uh, you got Portugal. Portugal. How lovely was that? Uh, that win against 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 Fiji. Uh, I watched that game with uh, with a mate of mine, and it was just it was just awesome to watch. For me, more than anything, it was it was the manner in which Portugal just uh, won that game. I mean, uh, ball in hand, high tempo, the skills levels. And yeah, I feel that tier two nations uh, for a start should be playing against each other. I mean, we should have, let's say, maybe a com or a series where Portugal plays against Uruguay and they play against uh, Fiji, Samoa and Tonga on a regular basis. And then obviously maybe 
three, four tests in a year, play against Tier 1 nations, building up to the next World Cup. And I think that's the only way they're going to get better. And uh, I personally wouldn't want... I don't want another World Cup where you have the 70, 80 points gaps in a game where... I mean, it's uh, it's crazy for me. Uh, I want uh, I want tier two nations to to get uh, quality oppositions uh, to become better, and that just builds. That just means that uh, the whole World Cup just becomes better. And yeah, uh, and even the the reception that uh, the Portugal players got uh, when they got back home, uh, it was just awesome to see on the socials. And and yeah, and obviously that also inspires the next generation of Portugal players. And I'm sure that after the Portugal versus Fiji games and how the reception was when Portugal got back, how the kids and the, the kids now in Portugal are definitely considering taking up rugby. And some of them will, and and that's just how it is. I mean, that's you just inspire the next generation, and it was just it was just lovely to see uh, the reception they got uh, in a in a country that's obviously uh, soccer dominated. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it was just it was just awesome to see. So for all you SA Raga lovers, uh, especially the ones who, who enjoy watching some junior rugby. Tomorrow, 1 p.m., uh, it's actually the final, uh, the under 21 championship final. So it's Western Province, VIP, uh playing against the Lions uh, down in City Park in Cape Town. Uh, the Western Province team has been unbeaten. Uh, they're playing the Lions, and I, I fully expect them to, to win that game. And just keep an eye out for uh, the number 10 of Western Province, uh, a certain... Sasha Feinberg Mgomezul. Uh, I think that kid is a future. He's definitely a buck in the making. And he's actually already played for the SA for the SAA team. Yeah, he's actually toured with them. Uh, and yeah, I mean he's 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 one of the most complete flyers I I've seen in a very long time. Uh, he's good on D distribution, he's got the flair, and he's a good goal kicker. Is that uh, is that Mani Lebok and Henry Pollard in one? Maybe. Uh, but anything, uh, just watch out for Sasha. Just watch out for that Western Province team. I think they've got another golden generation coming through, and it should be a good a good game to watch. Uh, but yeah. And yeah, it's uh, it's almost the end of the show. Uh, and for all you Raga lovers, uh, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I would love to see your teams. Uh, send me any any comments about the show, what you like, what you don't like. I'm free to engage. Uh, you can hit me up on the on the socials, and don't forget uh, Sunday night, 9 p.m. Uh, it's the box vs. France, uh, and all the best to the box. And I'll see you next week Friday uh, for the second episode, uh, the T Man Raga Show. Uh, adios and cheers. <laughs>